that's one uh, sad truth about why you're here. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, this is the MGTOW Cowboy. Here comes part two of Gentleman Knight and his video, The Truth About Your Single Mother. Uh, and uh, it, it explains a lot when you see some of these neighborhoods, you see some of these, like, you know, inner cities and some of these trailer parks. You wonder why they look like that. Well, a lot of their, a lot of those women, they, they did those conjugal visits. They went right to the prison and they, they got them a, a guy out of prison and they had a kid with them. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, believe it or not, some of that shit is hereditary. That criminal behavior, that shit kind of passes down. It's, it's well known. It's well known and it's, it's, it's kind of documented, but it's not an exact science and it's not something that, you know, a professional can really go around and tell people. But the reality is, uh, yeah, that shit passes down, man. There's a good chance you're going to be a criminal if your father was a criminal. So uh, that's that's the truth. Um, now, uh, once you become a teenager, like once I became a teenager, uh, my mother had difficulties disciplining me uh, because whatever she did, it just wasn't painful. It just didn't hurt. You know, I just wasn't afraid. She could throw a hot iron at me. She could be ironing some clothes and throw a hot iron at me, and that wouldn't be painful because she just didn't have, didn't have enough force to throw the iron. Uh, and it hit me so maybe it could burn me but you know I could like I said it's just she just wasn't strong enough to throw it fast enough at me and hit me so I could easily just dodge you know a hot iron uh, you know uh, uh, maybe she threw like some glass at me or something like that but you know I, I, I was fortunate enough not to be abused or anything like that but I have had a hot iron thrown at me if you want to consider that to be abuse uh, but I was being a little knucklehead um, and my mom she couldn't hold back her temper so you know, she threw an iron at me one time, and I, you know, dodged it very easily. I actually chuckled and laughed, uh, which frustrated her even more. Uh, but yeah. Uh okay, just quickly, uh, I wanted to make a comment about what he just said right now. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's true, uh, and the statistics bear this out. Apparently, um, mothers uh, perform the majority of what we would call uh, child abuse. Uh, the majority of all incidences of child abuse are um, the mother's fault. So, you know, the, the, the common narrative that you hear is that, oh, no, you know, when it comes to uh, violence within the family, it is most likely the father or the man or the boyfriend uh, who is who's engaging in violence against, uh, against people that he lives with, whether it's, you know, the wife or the kids. Well, that's not true. In point of fact... Most child abuse is the mother abusing the children, not the father. That is, uh, that is proven, and that is something that the feminists absolutely hate to talk about. But it's true. Remember that. All right, here we go. Um, so, um, you know, once uh, you, know, you have these teenagers who can't be disciplined by their, their, their moms, right? Uh, there, there's a, a process that's to happen, but... Uh, I, that's going to be for another video, but uh, basically, you know, once you become a teenager and you're living in like a city, a shitty situation, uh, you're supposed to have the option of leaving. The option of leaving, but we don't. Uh, the system that we live in today, you don't have that option. You have to go to school until you're like 18 or 19. So, uh, you know, that's again, that's a, a topic for another video. Um, you know, it, it has to do with school reform, which I'm gonna, I am gonna share. You know share my thoughts on school reform uh, in another video is uh, to, to hook you up with somebody to get you hooked up with another female um, and this is their strategy and I started noticing my mom do this around 15 and 16 you know she started mentioning that she was going to give me a hooker for my 16th birthday you know she started mentioning stuff like that or trying to get one of her girlfriends to have sex with me or trying to get one of her girlfriend's daughters to have sex with me now yeah my mother was was I mean, to me, even in my, even right now, I still consider my mom to be an angel. You're like, well, why would she want to do some shit like that? Well, one. Okay, I definitely, I definitely would not consider my mother an angel if uh, she was doing something like that. I consider that very depraved. But yeah, notice how uh, all he's really saying now is uh, he's segueing into how mothers, right at around the age of I don't know, 13, 14, definitely 15. 
uh, the young man starts to uh, come into, he starts, he, maybe not fully, but he starts to come into his physical prowess. And at that point, uh, the female lo loses, um, there's a certain dynamic where the female starts to lose a certain level of power over the son because the son can whip her ass, whoop her ass. Of course, it's not typically the son whooping the mother's ass. It's more like the mother taking pot shots at the son. <clears throat> but he can no longer, she can no longer do that with any effect because the man, because the young son is becoming, frankly, he's becoming a man. So, and then, and then he segues into talking about how, yeah, so they can't physically threaten us. So now they become much more devious and they start attempting to use sex in order to control us. Again, very depraved. But uh, I have found the same thing to be true. Women, women use sex as a weapon. Here we go. And, um, at first, I thought she wanted to do that because uh, she wanted to introduce me to sex with women so I wouldn't end up gay. So I thought that was one thing that uh, that she was trying to do. She was trying to get me to have sex with a prostitute or one of her friends or something like that so I wouldn't end up gay. So that's what I thought, right? But uh, there's actually an ulterior motive to that, right? There's an ulterior motive to why a lot of these single mothers try to get their sons to have sex early well and especially it's usually not with like a local girl girl down the street uh in my experience and when i've talked to other young men about this uh other men my age they also said the same thing that their mother tried to get to hook them up with like one of her friends uh or you know like somebody who was older to have sex with um and basically um that's their friend and once you have sex with them they know that you're gonna fall in love with that that woman. They know it. They know uh, that it's gonna happen because yeah, I'm in I'm in this parking lot right now. This fool is revving up his motorcycle, but uh, they know that if you have sex with that woman, right, you're gonna be addicted to it immediately because that woman is older. She's way more experienced than you, and you're a virgin. So she's gonna be doing all kinds of nasty tricks in the bedroom, right? And it's gonna be so incredible. Think about when you first start. Okay, so again, I mean, how, how depraved is that? How manipulative is that? That uh, a woman, uh, your mother no less, would actually use your erotic ardor to, um, to control you because she sees that she's losing control uh, physically. That is, uh, that's terrible. That's terrible. But that's women. I've also, I, women use sex as a weapon. Jerk it off or something like that. Like, if, if I would have had sex with a really experienced woman at that time, like, my mind would have been so fucked up. You know, I probably would have fucking robbed a, a liquor store for that woman. You know, if she would have, she pulled some tricks out. Like, I've, I've dated some freaky-ass girls who pulled some crazy shit out, and I was like, what the hell? You know, I, and I'm talking about these older women. They, they you know, they do all kinds of nasty stuff in the bedroom, let you bang them in the butt, let them, let you, you know, uh, bust in their mouth. They do all kinds of nasty stuff to these young guys because it's like a fantasy for them. And yes, uh, it is a form of uh, pedophilia and molestation, but, you know, our society doesn't really consider that to be uh, a form of molestation for an older woman to have sex with a 16-year-old dude. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be that way, but it is. And, um, you know, again, like I said, if I would have, uh, taking up any one of her friends offers or Okay, uh, just another quick aside notice how he brings up the concept of uh, or the double standard where if uh, Let's say a 16 year old boy has sex with a 30 year old woman uh, Most people they look the other way some people, you know, I, rem I remember that one episode from uh, South Park where they're talking about this very same uh, this very subject and even the police are just like Nice. Oh What? Who 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 you know who bad touched you? Oh, it was a woman. Nice, nice. They they, it's it is rape, but because it's a woman doing it to a man, uh, everyone looks the other way. But again, just reverse the roles. If it was a sixteen-year-old girl having sex with a thirty-year-old man, there would be a mob with pitchforks, uh, you know, gunning for that guy. But. Again, uh, this uh, gentleman Knight, he's spitting truth here because the real truth is it's a double standard. If you're, if you're a man having sex with an older woman, everyone looks the other way. It's, uh, it's, it's nice. Nice. But if it's the other way around, it's, uh, you know, you're, you're going to a state or federal penitentiary. All right, moving on. I'm doing that. 
I would have been addicted to sex at a very early age and I would have been making a lot of poor life decisions. I probably would have even got a girl pregnant at an early age because I would have been so addicted to sex. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons why they do that, um, and again, I, I, for a long time, I thought it was because they wanted uh, 